Hey guys, welcome. I thought I'd do a short follow-up video to my Supercharger 2 video, since a lot of you have been asking for my long-term thoughts. Now, I've been a bit hesitant to make one though, cause I'm assuming that when, when you're watching a video like this, it's because you're interested in buying one of the standard configurations uh, of the Supercharger, even though they've shifted a bit through the years. I bought mine in 2020, but my bike is no longer a vanilla bike, so to speak, because I've had a rear ring uh, replaced and that has an impact on range, on cadence, on speed and so on. Still, I think there's a couple of things that I can tell you that will be interesting to everyone considering purchasing this bike. Number one, if you want a belt drive, go for the roll-off hub. In my original review, I complained about the cost of the roll-off and I, I still think that it's a bit much. But the problem is that the Nuvinci is just not on the same level. And Reese and Mueller is not very clear about this, but the Nuvinci is not as efficient as the roll-off, so you have reduced range, and that efficiency further declines over time. Also, the cadence at the highest gears is lower than the roll-off, and that bothers me in particular because the numbers on the Reese and Mueller website, unless I completely misunderstand them, seem to imply differently. And it's something that I complain about in my original review, and it bugged me enough, uh, the cadence that is, to have the rear ring replaced. That did help. Um, it did lower the cadence, but it was not an unequivocal success because it proved to be a difficult upgrade technically. And that brings me to my second piece of advice, which is to find a bike mechanic that you trust because a bike like this is only really worth owning if you plan to put a lot of miles on it. And if you do that, it needs a lot of maintenance, preferably by someone who knows the ins and outs of this kind of bike. Now, where you live, that might not be the shop that gives you the biggest discount on the initial purchase. It might even be a shop that only sells a different brand of e-bike. So that stuff may not seem to matter when you're on the internet thinking of buying a bike, watching YouTube videos in search of the perfect bike. But it does matter in the long run. All right, the front rack um, has not proven to be very useful for me personally. I do really like the look of the front rack. And I do haul a lot of gear. I haul a lot of stuff and weight, but, but it's mostly into heavier pannier bags that I put on the rear rack. I haven't really found a good use case for the front rack and I even ended up taking it off because most normal bags are too high for the rack and then they get in front of the light and as someone who once had an LED light burn through three layers of backpack, I am not uh, taking any risks in that department. Now, Reese Miller have recently put out a front rack bag, a uh, custom made and they they now have an option if you order the bike to have the light placed on the front rack so that you can use that bag, which could be great if you're a mailman or some kind of courier. But for the average buyer, I can see how it would be useful, but in terms of aesthetics, let's just say it's, it's hard to improve on the way this bike looks. My fourth piece of advice would be to not fall. And I don't mean this as a joke. Riding a bike is awesome and I wish more people would do it. I wish more people made the switch, but statistically speaking, it is somewhat dangerous, especially if you calculate the risk per kilometer and compare it to other means of transportation. Okay, I know that I said I didn't mean this as a joke, but it did turn into a bit of a weird kind of joke two days after I recorded this, because I actually had an accident on my way back from work in Brussels. It was a car turning into a parking lot without checking the bike lane. The road was wet. I hit my brakes, but it didn't make it in time. So I didn't actually take my own don't fall advice. And it was a small thing in itself because I doubt you would even have called an ambulance if you seen it happen. But I did end up in hospital with a shoulder fracture and a torn ligament in my thumb. Now, I want to stress that these things don't happen because this is a dangerous bike. Quite, quite the contrary. Um, but when you do a lot of distance, when you do a lot of uh, distance, especially in rainy conditions in the city, um, and as you stop noticing the speed, I still think that we have to reclaim our cities one bike ride at a time. Just know that there are risks and do what you can 
to stay safe. It does help if you carry heavier stuff on your bike to make sure to put the weight as low as possible. All right, to finish up, just a couple of small things as a follow-up to my initial review. If you, like me, have trouble reaching the controls on the handlebar, just take a hex key and put them left of the brakes. I am really not a very DIY kind of guy, and even for me, it took a lot less time to fix that than it took me to record complaining about it in my original video. The rubber charging port was a real pain, and I was happy to see that when I got my bike back from the bike shop after a small repair, they had added a new recent Mueller branded cover free of charge. I'm already on my third or fourth of these covers because they don't really last very long, but hey, they're aware of the problem and they're looking for a solution. That's really all I ask. Alrighty, that's all I got. If you got any questions, hit me up in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you next time.